Destination Dallas. This evening, Nevada Las Vegas is in action in Houston. The run in Reds took a few minutes to get started in the first round, but Anthony Jones, 18 points, led the way over Northeast Louisiana. Armin Gilliam chipped in with 16. Tark's crew was on its way. Sunday on ESPN, the Reds' defense keyed an efficient offense. Jones had 24 points in 25 minutes, and Vegas took care of Maryland. Tonight, UNLV meets Auburn. Sonny Smith has his Tigers back in the Sweet 16 without the Cinderella quality of last year, but with a rampaging Chuck Person. Person found the paint too crowded in the first round against Arizona, so he took his act outside. He had 20 points. Sunday, the Tigers routed the number one seed of the West. St. John's, Auburn owned the backboards. Person, 15 rebounds and 27 points. Person's people in the run and rebel are live. ESPN presents the 1986 NCAA Tournament. Tonight, from the Summit in Houston, Texas, the Auburn Tigers battle the UNLV Running Rebels in a West Regional Semifinal. This portion of tonight's game is brought to you by Bud Light, the light beer with the first name in taste. Everything else is just a light. And by Hyphenex Lawn and Garden Products. Hyphenex, spread the word. Good evening. They call it the Sweet 16, and that certainly sounds nice. It reads nice in the newspaper, but tonight it's going to be down and dirty basketball as we eliminate four more teams on Destination Dallas. Good evening. I'm Bob Lee. With me, as always, Dick Vitale. We've got live action coming your way this evening from the West. Regional semifinal action as Auburn is in action against the UNLV running Reds. Let's walk to the big board of Hoop the Great Wall and see where we stand tonight. Moments from now, it'll be Auburn taking on UNLV. That's one of the two semifinals in the region tonight. North Carolina and Louisville, of course, is the other one in the West. Now, also in the Southeast this evening, we'll be giving you continual score updates and highlights on Kentucky and Alabama in the Southeast and the nightcap of the Omni, LSU and Georgia Tech. Now, Dick Vitale, we saw the run in Rebs this past weekend. We talked about how, yes, they beat Maryland. They did it with rebounding and they did it with defense. Call them the run in Rebs, but they're in your face defensively the entire night. Bob, I think three factors why I think Nevada Las Vegas will prevail. One, their pressure defense will exert a lot of pressure on White and also on Ford, and they've been very inconsistent in a backcourt for Auburn all year long. Number two, I believe the 2-3 active zone that Jerry Tarkanian will play after the pressure defense will create problems with the perimeter shot. Other than Chuck Person, they're a very, very inconsistent shooting team, Auburn. Person has been very streaky all year long. And the third factor, down the stretch, Sonny Smith's told me, he said if a game is close, we do not execute well down the stretch. Auburn and the run and Rebs, we will set the stage, then send you out to the summit as we are down now to the regional semifinals. Remaining, though, as we are now down to the regional semifinal, Dick, there is really only one true Western team, UNLV. You can make a case, go back a decade, they are the most consistent team west of the Rockies we have seen for the last 10 years. Uh, Jerry Tarkanian has been very consistent, especially since now UCLA, Bob's developed a new tradition, the NIT. They're no longer <laughs> NCAA. Hey, University of Southern Cal could get there if they hired Gene Bartow. Just get the cash together, Mike McGee, the AD. Bartow would come running, his family in Santa Monica, and I know he loves the coast. We'll be getting to the game in just a second. It'll be Fred White and Gary Thompson. We will be back at halftime. Enjoy the game. Thumbnail analysis, Dick Vitale. If you stuck, uh, stop Chuck Person, do you stop this Auburn team? He's at 20 and 27 points so far. Bob, Chuck Person's one of my old lottery selections. Certainly a great talent, but Chris Morris can be spectacular. Also, the kid Moore inside can score as well. And Michael Jones off the bench is an offensive threat. Let's get to the summit. We'll be back at halftime. Fred and Gary of the game. Another look at the summit, and now let's meet the officials as assigned by the NCAA. Very strong crew on hand here tonight. Timmy Higgins on the left, Lenny Wirtz in the middle, Charles Baca on your right as you look at him here. Excellent officials all. And now both teams away from their coaches were set to play basketball. Jerry Tarkanian in his 13th year at the helm of the running Rebels. And Sonny Smith in his ninth year at the helm of the Auburn Tigers. 
Auburn in the NCAA tournament for the third straight year. UNLV in their seventh NCAA tournament and their fourth straight. Auburn in their traveling blue uniforms. Nevada Las Vegas in home gray, trimmed in red, and Nevada Las Vegas with a basketball. Anthony Jones. Back out front to Mark Wade. Auburn immediately sets up in zone. 3-2, and uh, I was talking to Sonny Smith, and he said they've been predominantly a man club, but he said he was going to come out in zone, uh, UNLV. Wade with a lob in the middle, and the shot misses by Armand Gilliam. Auburn takes it away. Good block off, check off the board that time by Jeff Moore inside. From the deep corner, Chris Morris fires and misses. Nevada Las Vegas trying to dig it out of there, but they kick it away out of bounds, and Auburn gets the basketball back. So we're underway in Houston with West Regional action. And rebounding is going to be crucial in this basketball game. Uh, Auburn's been a strong rebounding club. They've out-rebounded 24 of the 31 opponents. Jerry Tarkanian is worried about that a little bit. His club has been inconsistent on the boards. Cool. Chuck Person from the top of the circle drills one, and Auburn draws first play. And we said top of the show that he can go inside or outside. There he shows you his range. Person is 6'8", senior from Brantley, Alabama. 52% shooter, averaging 21 points a game. And there's the ball taken away. Darrell White, deep corner, Person off the front of the rim. Frank Ford in a rebound battle, couldn't come up with it. Now Mark Wade for UNLV. It's knocked loose and tenor for Gilliam. Back comes Person. Poor, ju face. Poor judgment on the pass that time by Wade because the defense was sagged way back in there on the break. And he's not a kid that wants to shoot it, so he doesn't penetrate it in and look for the shot. Jeff Moore, the center, fires in the top of the circle. And he can shoot from there, but he missed that time. Again, Auburn back in the zone. Tigers leading 2-0. Anthony Jones in front of Freddie Banks. Nice feed down inside. The turnaround jump shot, good. Armand Gilliam picks up the first two for the running Rebels. Well, Gilliam averaging 15.6 uh, on the year. And the run of Rebels offense, 64% of it comes from Gilliam, Jones, and Banks. And incidentally, we might point out that Banks has been struggling uh, as of late in his shooting, and the Rebels need his outside threat. Person misses from the corner. Anthony Jones answers from the wing and draws it. Anthony Jones picks up his first two. Nevada Las Vegas takes a quick two-point lead. When Anthony Jones, a great shooter, and he's really been hot. The last five games, he's averaged 23 points a ball game. That's five over his average of 18-1. Auburn one for five from the floor in the early going. Nevada Las Vegas two for three. Person hit the first shot of the game. And now the Tigers have missed four straight. Good. There's the lob to Person down inside. Good assist from Gerald White. Everybody runs that play anymore against those zones. Go back over the top. You've got great athletic ability, great leaping ability, and that plays there. We've already seen great versatility from Chuck Person, Gary. Well, he can do it all, as we said, inside, has the power to go inside, and has the great shot outside. Freddie Banks has been in the shooting slump, and he missed that one. Well, here you see Auburn attacking the zone. Here's Person coming along the baseline, times his jump. Good pass by White, gets behind the defensive man, Gilliam, right there, and lays it in. Auburn with a basketball, one of four Southeast Conference teams still alive, the other three in action in Atlanta. As the running Rebels uh, are in the zone there, they will still get up tight on that man with the ball. Good person. Stepped on the out-of-bounds strike. A turnover charged Auburn, Jerry Tarkanian. Look at that career record, 320 and 80. And 25 years of coaching, he's won 650. Well, that's not years. his career record. That's his 13-year uh, record at Las Vegas right there. He's got a total of 654 and 126 in career. In fact, this is his 25th year of coaching, the silver anniversary season. Fred Banks, nice fake in the lane, picks up the jump shot, and the battle Las Vegas goes in front, 6-4. And you know, that's got to be a plus for uh, running Rebels. Get Banks off to a good start. He's been 2 for 10 and 5 for 14 in the two NCAA games. Jones with the nurse deal, but they turn it back over. Banks one for two in this one. After going seven for 24 in the first two tournament games. He needed to hit early, Banks, in order to get some of that confidence back. Gary, as often happens when a shooter's in a little bit of a slump, if they can kind of shoot off the move sometimes, not just be stationary, it'll help them and help him that time. Well, I think that's one of the toughest shots. When you get it wide open, nobody around you, you'd like uh, not the tough pressure. They're right up there, a little hand to face. Uh, most shooters shoot better, I think, then. Well, Chuck Person firing away from long-range misses. He's two for five tonight. 6-4, Nevada, Las Vegas. The Rebels with a basketball. 
Wade to Fred Banks. Anthony Jones from way outside loops one in and out. Flowers tipped it back outside. Wade tried to shoot it back inside to Anthony Jones. It's knocked away out of bounds and belongs to Nevada, Las Vegas. Auburn doing a good job of covering up and uh, getting in those passing lanes. Wade, a couple, three times now, has tried to thread the needle and uh, hasn't been able to get it done. Wade. Got Jones chasing the baseline. Don't look for the point guards to shoot it very much in this game. Wade gets it down in the lane. Armin Jillian turns around, drops it in. He has four points, and the Rebels up by four. They to four. And Gilliam, a strong player, 6'9", 230 uh, inside. He gets it down in there. He's going to be tough. Right to Ford. You notice they play a 1-1-3 one, one, zone. Uh, Jerry Tarkinian calls it as amoeba zone. Jeff Moore, the center, coming out on the wing to take the ball. Frank Ford. Anthony Jones covering Ford there on that side of the zone. And Ford kind of bumped as the ball comes in the lane. Saved over there by Chris Morris. Gerald White. Now more person sets up at the high post. They've got him. Turn around jumper off the heel of the rim. Frank Ford with a tough offensive rebound. Going to be called for a walk. Ford saying he was pumped as he came down with the ball. Sonny Smith's got a word for the official as he comes by. And that's not surprising. Uh, Ford's a good rebounder for a guard, averaging almost four and a half rebounds a game. You see the ball coming out long there. Ford comes down with it, then loses his step. Called for the walk. Jones to Banks. Looked in at Flowers. Now they take it down inside, and Flowers with a jump hook. John Flowers, first two points. Nevada, Las Vegas, leading 10 to 4. Flowers, not a, normally a big offensive threat either, but against the zone, uh, they're probably going to give some inside as they try to cover up on the, the wings on the good shooters. He only shoots the ball four or five, maybe six times a game. They try to get it to person in the lane, knocked loose, and Anthony Jones up court quickly for Nevada, Las Vegas. Smart move there by Jones. He was on a... Red one on three and pull him up, take it out. Red Banks from the deep corner, and Auburn's going to get a timeout. Nevada Las Vegas is on him quickly here at the Summit in Houston, West Regional Action. Timeout with 14 17 left in our first half. Nevada Las Vegas leading Auburn 12 to 4. To a hot shooting start here. Auburn got the first shot down from Chuck Person, but then went cold. They've hit just one of their next seven. That's right. Two for eight, 25%. Well, a UNLV, a hot six of nine, 66.7%. Chuck Person has taken six of those Auburn shots. Morris has tried one, and Jeff Moore took one. And more importantly, they're also uh, up rebounding the Auburn Tigers right now, five to three, giving them pretty much just one shot. And Gary Nevada Las Vegas shots coming pretty much from in close, and Auburn really firing away from the perimeter. They've had only the one shot, the dunk from Person down inside so far. So the Tigers down by four. Running Rebels picking up with pressure that time, looking to double team uh, on Gerald White. Handled it well. The freshman is in the ball game, replacing more now for Auburn. That's Jones with the basketball here. Frank Ford comes out of the lane, puts up an air ball. Oh, stuck by Chris Morris for his first two points in the ball game. Well, he's the kind of kid they said uh, he's a great leaper and makes a lot of critical plays in the game. Uh, this is early in the game, but that's one that they need to keep from getting blown out here early. Anthony Jones to Mark Wade to Fred Banks for Nevada, Las Vegas. Auburn again in that zone. Jones tried to flip it inside to Gilliam, taken out of there by Ford. Got it to person in open court, and the call is going to go against Nevada Las Vegas. Fred Banks whistled for a foul, his first. Right here you see him coming out with the rebound. Person going over there, and Banks cutting off. Did not have position, and uh, knocks Person down, picks up his first foul. 12-6, Nevada Las Vegas. A traveling call, and Auburn turns it over again. Foul, I believe, was against Fred Banks a moment ago. 13-26 left in first half action. Sonny Smith, the Auburn coach, looking on. Grew up in Roan Mountain, Tennessee. Smith really unhappy with something from the officials chattering away over there. Banks. It's Anthony Jones. We're saying overloading. He's running the baseline, overloading one side to another. Tipped away by Person. They got the numbers. Jones to Morris. Down inside. Morris throws up a soft shot that doesn't fall. That's Person with the rebound, and he's fouled. Well, it wasn't. It was Frank Ford that picked up the rebound down inside. Boy, he is a strong rebounding guard. They call him the baby bull. <laughs> You're to see why. 
And you'll see the action right now as we come back in. As they come down, they had the numbers on the mismatch. Goes up here, drops it off Ford, comes into Morris. He'll miss the shot, but then here's Ford following out here. Gets a, a lucky break, falls into his hands, and takes it up strong and gets hammered across the wrist. Beat of the line for two. John Bowers first foul, second foul on Nevada, Las Vegas. Auburn has not committed one yet. Frank Ford, a 6'4 junior from Kissimmee, Florida. Probably one of the most underrated players in the SEC conference. Does a lot for this club, keeps them together as a leader, one of a coach on the floor. 73% free throw shooter, and hits them both. So Auburn's starting to get back in it now. 12 8, Nevada, Las Vegas. 12.54 left in our first half. Good full court pressure here in a 2 1 2. Foul is going to go against Auburn as Mark Wade dribbled through the trap that time. It's on Terrence Howard, his first, and uh, Terrence Howard in the ball game is an exceptional defensive player. Cat quick type player can really put on defensive pressure. Here I mentioned Nevada Las Vegas, the only team in the West left in the NCAA tournament. The Geodetic Center of the United States is on Meads Ranch in Osborne County, Kansas. They're the only team west of Meads Ranch in Osborne County, Kansas still in this thing. Being a Kansas to take you to know that, I guess. <laughs> Down the Thanks, shot in and out. That's Armand Gilliam loops it in and out, and Anthony Jones came down the baseline to stick it in. Well, run on Rebels crashing those offensive boards. A strong rebounding club uh, consistently has been offered, but uh, UNLV really getting up on the glass offensively. Got three tries. Nevada Las Vegas has been having problems out rebounding people, but that time they got strong on the offensive board. Mike Jones getting heavy pressure now. Nevada Las Vegas extending Next, that defense. That's just what I was going to say, Fred. They've extended defense out. If they can find him, they ought to be able to get the person the ball inside. Jones steps into the circle, puts up the shot, and hits. The freshman gets two down for Auburn. Mike Jones, a freshman from Phoenix City, Alabama, has two. Well, they call him instant offense, and it didn't take him too long to get on the board. He wasn't bashful about it, was it? Mike Jones, perhaps the most highly recruited player in the history of Auburn basketball. Great All-American, averaged uh, 22 points and 14 rebounds. Uh, well, I'll tell you what, they're shooting the thing from a different area code here tonight. Everybody going at it from long range as Jones got an air ball. There's Armand Gilliam. Watch here, strong kid. Look at that physical activity going inside right here between Person and Gilliam. It is rough. Jerry Tarkanian wants a timeout. I don't know what he's seen that he wants to change here, but Jerry Tarkanian uses one of his timeouts here midway through the first half. 11-28 left in first half action here at the Summit in Houston. The Battle Las Vegas leading Auburn four. NCAA and any use of this program without written consent is prohibited. The announcers for this program have been approved and contracted by NCAA Productions. Welcome back to the Summit in Houston. Fred White along with Kerry Thompson. On second chance points, Auburn a little stronger on the board so far than UNLV, although the Rebels just got those three cracks at it and converted one. UNLV has had four uh, offensive rebounds, but they got uh, two at that one crack. You saw Sonny Smith there a moment ago, the Auburn head coach. Anthony Jones, the splendid forward from Nevada, Las Vegas, the PCAA co-player of the year, and the most valuable player in the tournament. Auburn trapping now out of that zone. Banks, good penetration by Banks. Great pass. Inside to Eldridge Hudson. And it's out of bounds. Still belongs to Nevada, Las Vegas. Frank Ford thought it was off Hudson Sands. Hudson battling the flu in the lineup for the first time tonight. Good job. Wait for practice yesterday because he was being ministered to. Excuse me, Fred. I was going to say, good job by Banks there. They double team. They kicked it out to him right away. He penetrated because he got a, has a mismatch of people in there. Banks. I think that basket was going to count. There's a foul down in the lane. And that's against Eldridge Hudson, who just came into the lineup for UNLV. A 6'7 junior from Carson, California. He said it's rough underneath those boards. You hear you again to see the inside play coming up. And they call that on Eldridge Hudson right there, 33. Team 10, UNLV leading Auburn here. Frank Ford. They had Nevada Las Vegas a little bit out of whack that time, but they didn't press the attack. 
Now Mike Jones is fouled. The shot goes in the air. It's good. The basket went in, but I don't think it's going to count. Charles Vaca, the official, has called the foul on Eldridge Hudson, and that's his second foul since coming into the ballgame. It didn't take him long to pick up two. Vasca did not count. Hudson, as you can see, a very husky young man. Had a serious knee injury his freshman year and has battled his way back. Almost total reconstruction of that knee. Terrence Howard now at the point for Robert. For Mike Jones. Chris Morris tried to feed it down inside. Hudson got a hand on it, knocked it out of bounds. It'll belong to Auburn right in front of the UNLV bench. Jeff Moore returning now to the Auburn lineup. The Tigers center, a sophomore from Birmingham, Alabama. Terrence Howard at the point, a sophomore. One ball play. Yes, it is. Uh, got off to a slow start. They're picked for a high finish uh, to win the SEC. Got started slow, but Sonny Smith said he'd look for the club maybe start slow and come on because of their youth, and that's just what they've done. Sonny Smith, as I mentioned, from Rome Mountain, Tennessee, originally. Interesting guy. Coached at four high schools, <laughs> including Pine Knot, Kentucky, and Logat, North Carolina one time. Had a couple years at East Tennessee State also before coming over to Auburn where he's done a great job. Terrence Howard, Frank Ford, right side of the circle, short. Oh, you know who might have tipped that in? Gilliam. Armand Gilliam. Gilliam, right. Tigers get a break. Armand Gilliam inadvertently tipped the ball in the opponent's basket. It's 14 to 12 UNLV. They might scored uh, UNLV. I remember it's 12 to 4, so 8 to 2 here on the run. I'm not sure who they'll give the basket to. We'll have to check it for you. Might have been Frank Ford, the shooter. UNLV doing a good job of getting the ball inside. Gilliam gets it up off the glass again. Armand Gilliam has six points now. 16 to 12, UNLV. Gilliam is three for five from the floor. They get half the points from his inside people between Flowers and uh, Gilliam. They gave that Auburn basket to Chris Morris a moment ago. Terrence Howard, Frank Ford starts a move and comes back up. Good cover up on the defense that time because his penetration could pass out to the wing. Edwards Hudson shutting down. Now Moore, now Morris, now Ford, and he walked. <laughs> That's one thing you can't do. In fact, you know, we were talking with officials about some calls just before coming over as we walked over to the, the summit here with him. We were talking about that call where we'd seen one let go before, and I'll just verify it's got to be a walk, and that's exactly what it is. Gary, we talked about Tampa earlier. So far, Auburn has not been able to get out and run the way they'd like to. It's been a half-court ballgame. UNLV, at least early, uh, was shooting well. It's hard to run unless you can get that basket uh, ball off the board. Anthony Jones misses. Boy, they are firing away from long range here in this ballgame. Now, that's one and hit it. Oh, what a soft hands. Anthony Jones with a tremendous touchdown under the basket. It's tough to run. Another reason is when they get off the boards right now, UNLV is jamming on that outlet pass. There they convert it. Six points now for Anthony Jones. That's one of the fine way, ways, I think, Fred, is to stop a fast break. It's just to jam that first guy with the ball, get up there tough, and not let him get out in the open court and get it started. Jones made the deflection and wound up with that great catch and getting the basket down under. There's taken away. Here comes Wade in open court against Terrence Howard. Takes him in the lane. Now to Jones. Throws it. Anthony Jones has eight. And the battle Las Vegas up by eight points. Jones doing a great job there. Just balanced out, taking his night, time, squaring up, and getting the shot. Eight minutes left in the first half. Howard will be a walk. He's going to be called for a travel. Anthony Jones hits the deck. He got hit in the collision. And he is lying on the floor in the lane. Official Lenny works quickly getting to him along with his teammates, and he's going to get to his feet. No, he's not in any hurry. And the pressure defense of the running Rebels really telling now, causing the Auburn Tigers a lot of problems. Anthony Jones got set up defensively. And then caused the travel. Chuck Person now returns to the Auburn lineup. Person two for six in this ball game. The Tigers need to get him on track. Look at the turnovers. Auburn has turned it over eight times already, and they are down by eight points with 7.59 left in first half action here. Rebel fans celebrating a pretty good contingent on hand here from Las Vegas tonight. Mark Wade for the Rebels. Auburn in that zone. Fred Banks. Anthony Jones from the corner. Boy, he is having some shooting problems. He keeps firing away from way out in the corner. He's at four out of seven shots in the ball game, and doesn't seem like 
doesn't seem like he's been that accurate, really. Four out of eight was making. Well, when they when you miss those outside ones, or you hit them either way, Fred, you remember him. He's had a couple of buckets inside. He got one on the tip, and good strong play that time by Eldridge Hudson. Eldridge Hudson. First two points for the junior. And now Nevada Las Vegas up by ten. And the Rebels are taking command of this game right now. Look at that zone again at 1-1-3. Uh, one, one, You'll see the two guards out there, Wade chasing on the ball. Back line. Auburn just not real crisp on the attack, Gary. They don't seem to be real certain of what they want to do. And there's an air ball from the deep corner. Mike Jones, the freshman, threw one up in the deep corner and missed it all. Auburn's got to have some patience against that zone. Take your time, work, and get some better shots. Better shot selection. Nevada Las Vegas now with a 10-point lead in the basketball. Got person up there on the top of that 3-2 zone. Red Banks drills one. He has a half dozen points. And Banks now is at three out of five shots on the floor. So his shooting slump may be over. And Nevada Las Vegas out quickly here. They have forced Auburn into their second timeout with 6.46 left in the first half. Nevada Las Vegas leading Auburn 24-12. Fourth time this year, Ed Davenir will put this hoop in with the assist of Kenny Walker. Kentucky has control of this game, 20 to 15, midway through the first half. Now let's return to Houston and Fred White. Welcome back to the Summit in Houston, Texas. West Regional Action. Fred White along with Gary Thompson with 6:46 left in our first half. Nevada Las Vegas leading Auburn 24 to 12. Points off turnover so far. Nevada Las Vegas with 10. Auburn with just four. Auburn has hit just five of 15 shots from the floor. Nevada Las Vegas has put up six more shots. And they are 12 for 21. Nevada Las Vegas has scored 10 points, nine in a row in the last eight minutes. And Auburn has just been stuck. And coming in, it was just the opposite. UNLV won both games in those first and second rounds, shooting 41.2% and 42.8, which is tough to win. I don't know how they did it shooting those percentages. Chuck Person simply cannot find the range. And the Lennon Rebels up by a dozen with a basketball with 6.22 left in first half action here. As UNLV wins, of course, over Northeast Louisiana and Maryland, which they defeated for the second time in the season. Auburn having shooting problems, firing away from way out on the perimeter. Banks from way outside, and he may have regained his confidence, Gary. He has really got it going. That's exactly what they needed. And one of the reasons I think Sonny Smith went to the zone was UNLV hadn't been playing against much zone, and the other was that they were not shooting the ball at the wing positions that well. Auburn went 1-3-1 one, one zone, trying to change it up. They've been 3-2. Banks is averaging 18 points a game. Gary mentioned earlier just 7 for 24 in the first two games in the tournament. But it's 5 for 7 here tonight, and Chris Morris takes it inside that time for Auburn. That's where they need to try to attack the zone. They need to get it inside a little bit more, get their shooting going. They've been living all on the outside, having shooting. Good penetration by the guards, forcing the defense to come up at times where they could kick it inside. Anthony Jones from the deep corner. Notice UNLV overloads that on one side. Banks, he's just kind of, you notice him kicking his feet up every time, hoping that ball's going in, and he is getting nothing but cords here in this first half. Fred Banks has regained his shooting touch. He has a dozen points in this ballgame now. I think a 10. Darrell White to Chuck Person. Auburn having problems with Nevada Las Vegas defense. There's the lob to Person. It misfires. And this time it was there. Edward Hudson to Wade. Fred Banks. That time he misses, and Morris clears the rebound for Auburn. The Tigers trying to get it up now. They're three on two. Ford off balance, fires and hits. Tough shot. He had the numbers that time, didn't take it back to the middle. I was looking for that. They had two lane men on the other side. I was looking for the other lane men to come, him go back to the middle, but he made a tough shot. First field goal for Frank Ford. 28-16. Nevada Las Vegas by a dozen. Jones in the circle. Boy, they're running their stuff very, very well right now. Great job there again by Jones. I'm impressed with him. We knew he's a great shooter, but the way he gets it, comes out there tough, stops, gathers himself, doesn't force it, gets under control. Morris came down the baseline. He's called for a charge. 
Everything going wrong for Auburn right now. Morris got down under the basket and picked up a charging foul as John Flowers got in good defensive position here. Trying to go inside. Here's the pass to the baseline. Morris goes in. Now you see the defense coming over. He set and planted, and a good job by Gilliam of turning the man loose and letting the support defense come up and take him. Ross Redout, one of the assistant coaches sitting next to Chris Morris on the Nevada Las Vegas bench. Ralph, a part-time coach now, but was full-time with Jerry Tarkanian back in those running days, 73 through 79, he coached there as a full-time. It wasn't Chris Morris, excuse me. He's on the other bench and on the floor with for Auburn. Ford for Gerald White. They've got Person down under. He's there. He's stuck it. And that's one of the first baskets I remember they really got off of pure transition. I didn't think he was going to see Person in time because he was wide open uh, for about a count or two before that. With Person in the first two games in the NCAA tournament picked up 47 points and 23 rebounds. Auburn back within a dozen. 321 left in the first half. The Tigers undoubtedly would love to get it down into single digits now by halftime. Thanks. If they can do that, I think they'd feel pretty good the way they've shot in this first half for an early part. Anthony Jones had it knocked loose by Morris, saves it. Auburn, to me, just not moved. That area will show some quickness as Ford gets in the middle and makes an exception. It did not seem to be as quick right now. The foul committed by Mark Wade in Nevada, Las Vegas, his first. That's only team foul number five on the Rebels, and Auburn's committed only two so far. This is Auburn Tigers trying to get out, get that running game established. Ford goes down, goes up. Gets grabbed right there on the arm by Mark Wade. Wade originally started his basketball career at the University of Oklahoma, played there one year, and then transferred to El Camino JC out in California and become a junior college All-American out there. Frank Ford on the free throw line, looking at the... Nevada Las Vegas bench. There's Ford's free throw good. He's three for three and has five points. Ford now with a half dozen points. The 6'4 junior. Pressure again in the 2-1-2 two, two trap and they turn it over. Auburn trying to fight their way back in this thing now. Person from way outside, and this is again Chris Morris with an offensive rebound. Can't oh, it. That was Person. Person. Chuck Person has eight, a very strong offensive rebound that time. Who said he'd go inside or out, and he really went to the board and jammed that down, and UNLV has got to check off. You have to go out and meet those guys, check them off the board. Chris Morris forcing the turnover. Go, oh, nice speed. And there's going to be a foul back in open court against Chris Morris. It'll be his second personal foul. Well, here's the play just uh, ahead of this one coming down here where Auburn's putting up the shot. You see the jam by Persons. He comes in, reaches back with his left hand and jams it down. Here's the foul. We just had Morris coming over there. And from that angle right there, it looked as he was moving as the offensive man, I thought, did a job of passing and then fading out at a 45 and looked like the defensive man was moving. Let's take another look at this. Here comes Morris. Coming down the one, going to the right right there, 34, passes the ball, moves out, and the defensive man moving out and into him. I think that should have been a block. As a result of that collision, this is Fred Banks on the floor, and the UNLV trainer, Jerry Koloski, out working over him. You see Armin Gilliam looking on, and now Jerry Tarkanian, the Rebel coach, has come out, and Banks is now sitting up. Banks averaging 17-6 a game and has really been on a hot streak uh, here in this first half, we got him six out of nine on officially 12 points, all from the field. And just when the guy's getting it going, uh, Jerry Tarkanian doesn't want to lose this guy. They're going to have to take the time out or take Banks out of the ball game. And one of the officials, Charles Vaca, talking to Jerry Tarkanian, I think he said, just said we're going to take him out. You can see the concern on the Auburn bench. The Tigers off to a very slow start here if it. Nine out of 22 shots so far in this ball game. Thanks still, boys. Not still able to down. get to his feet. That was a pretty good collision up there. Nevada, Las Vegas mentioned four straight PCAA championships for the Rebels since joining the conference in 82. They have gone 64 and 6 and 11 and 1 in the postseason tournament, led by that man, Jerry Tarkanian. 
There goes some of their offense. Banks, Gilliam, and Jones have scored 64% of the Rebel points this year. He's their number 10 all-time scorer at UNLV. He has a chance next year maybe to become their number one if he has a great year. Now we'll get the substitution for Nevada Las Vegas. It's going to be Gary Cram, a 6'4 junior from Baltimore's Dunbar High School coming on the floor. One of 12 graduates of Dunbar playing in Division One now. And that's not a good trade-off, uh, Graham, for Banks offensively. Graham's an excellent defensive player and usually comes in to stop somebody, but he averages only 3-9 a game, and you lose Banks at 17-6. Auburn with a sudden burst has moved within nine points in the Battle of Las Vegas now, and Banks, who has the hot hand, is out of there. Jones had the pass deflected, but saved that time by the Battle of Las Vegas. Saved by Graham. Jones dribbles through the track. Nice pass. Deep. Boy, that was a great pass. Just an underhand flip. Armand Gilliam. Armand Gilliam picked up his eighth point, and the Rebels go up by 11 with 149 left in the first half. Rebels beating that pressure on the trap half court as they were operating out of a 1 3 1 trap. Mike Jones might have had a shot, pass it up. Now Gerald White from the side of the circle drills it. Good ball, ball movement. Points. Excuse me, Fred. Good ball movement again by Auburn. First two points for Gerald White, the 6 1 junior. Neither one of these point guards are going to shoot it very much. White averaging five points a game. Mark Wade averaging just three from Nevada, Las Vegas, and there's a whistle horn. Anthony Jones trying to push his way through on the offense, and Chuck Person getting position on him, and Anthony Jones picks up the foul. Second personal foul on Anthony Jones. 6'7 senior from Washington, D.C., a transfer from Georgetown. A thousand point score. Gerald White. Auburn down by nine, chance to close within seven. They were down by 14 just a couple of minutes ago, so the Tigers battling their way back here now. Four to person. They've been looking down inside more, Gary. They've right. sort of given up on the perimeter where they weren't shooting well at all. Well, where they're shooting from, those are tough percentage shots. They went all night long, and there's another one. I know Person's a great shooter, but I think he can get something in a little bit better range. Armand Gilliam out on the break. Nevada Las Vegas. Back up by 11 as Gilliam picks up his 10th point. 54 seconds left in the half. They're running, Rebels. They're running. Person. White. Back to Person on the wing. White steps into the lane. Down in it comes in the middle. Shot's good. Jeff Moore picks up his first two points for the Tigers. Well, he's got some capabilities of scoring down inside. He's a street shooter down there. He has some range. Uh, and Jerry Tarkanian holding up one finger he's going to go for one shot a smart move nevada las vegas up by nine 23 seconds left in the half and auburn changing the defense there's a small thing but it's an important thing you're going against they're pressuring up now as they go for one shot and jones went to meet that basketball instead of waiting to come for him it might have been intercepted otherwise 10 seconds left in the half the Rebels will start the move mark wade with a basketball 34 25 nevada las vegas jones free on the wing shoots it's in and out tip guy won't go and time has expired here in the first half. And the Battle of Las Vegas maintaining the lead throughout the first half here at the Summit in Houston. At halftime, in the first game of the West Regional here, this man, Jerry Tarkanian's ball club in front of Sonny Smith. So Jerry Tarkanian seeing his club shoot the ball well and play well at halftime. The Battle of Las Vegas 34, Auburn 25, and we'll be back right after this. Regional semifinal action. It was at one point a 14-point lead for the UNLV running Rebs, and right now a 34-25 halftime lead live on ESPN. Along with Dick Vitale, I'm Bob Lee, and so as we keep an eye on everything else happening tonight, Kentucky's game, by the way, uh, with the Wildcats leading it by five inside uh, two minutes to go in the first half of the Omni, that game against Alabama. Let's talk about the game that we're interested in right here. We talked about leading into the game, negating Chuck Person. You didn't hear his name mentioned at all to the latter minutes of the first half, and also the shooting, which you correctly analyzed. Auburn couldn't buy an outside shot to begin with. Bob, anybody that's watched Auburn all year, one of its real weaknesses has been the perimeter jump shot. Other than Person, who's a very streaky shooter, but a great talent, they're a very, very streaky shooting team. However, they've got to be very happy now going into the locker room nine down, because I thought it was getting ready for blowout city. And also, psychologically, here's an example of the shot clock how it is a factor, because you're Sonny Smith now, and you know at Auburn that they have to shoot the ball every 45 seconds, meaning Las Vegas. Right. Therefore, you know you're going to get the ball back, so you don't have the fear factor and the panic factor to fear the delay game. Auburn, one of the four SEC teams that are still alive in this championship tournament, as we said at the top of the game, 
UNLV over the last decade, you'd have to say there is no more consistent true Western team than the run in Rebs. And yes, they can play defense. And at this point right now, looking to move on. And, of course, the other game this evening in the West, to what a matchup. Well, how much experience can you cram onto one court when Denny Crum takes on Dean Smith? You're talking about just a great matchup and a lot of size. I'm reading reports where people say that the big guy hasn't been dominant in the NCAA tournament. Somebody better tell that to Jimmy Bayheim and David Robinson and introduce him to him. But here you're looking at some great big people. Purvis Ellison, uh, the true great freshman center in America, and also Brad Doherty, some people say, will be the first selection of the NBA draft. Uh, right now, you've got to think about the great quickness of Louisville. However, I think because of a lot of pride, I think North Carolina, everybody's got them buried, that they're going to somehow gut it out and get the W. And you're not wearing any Carolina blue tonight, <laughs> anyway. The winner of that game plays the winner of the game. We are engrossed in bringing you with the UNLV running Rebels, leading it by nine points. It is brought to you by MasterCard. MasterCard International. Master the possibility. Welcome back at halftime. I'm Bob Lee with me, Dick Vitale. The other game ongoing this evening in the Southeast, the first of two games to be played tonight at the Omni, has just gone to halftime with Kentucky holding a four-point lead. Now that's a 32-28 halftime lead over Alabama. We'll be updating you on the score throughout the evening on that one. And Alabama, on a couple of occasions, Dick, as we were watching that game, appeared to be on the verge of being blown out, but it didn't happen. Well, they got such great talent when you're talking about Buck Johnson inside and also Terry Connors, an outstanding point guard. But I love Kenny Walker. The one great common denominator of Kenny Walker is that he plays with such intensity every time he takes the floor. And really, that reflects the great personality of Mr. Eddie Sutton because when you talk about a great coaching job, Mike Krzyzewski, Eddie Sutton, and Luke Kornacek this year, those three guys, to me, one, two, and three, rank as the three great coaching jobs of 1986. Well, with all due deference to Coach Joe B. Hall, uh, Kenny Walker, three years into him, he was a tremendous player those years. Coach Hall probably sitting back with his feet up tonight, this time of the year, for the first time in a number of years. We're at halftime right now. UNLV 34-25 lead. We will continue right after this one. at halftime along with Dick Vitale. I'm Bob Lee. The game at Atlanta has a four-point Kentucky lead right now over Alabama. Winner of that Wildcats game will be taking on the winner of the LSU Georgia Tech game. All right, let's 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 forget, Dick, about the idea the entire question of home court advantage. It's going to be a Georgia Tech home court, despite the fact Bobby Kremen says it's been sold out for two months. Maybe our fans couldn't get a hold of tickets. They can get a hold of tickets for tonight. Bobby Kremens can give you all the con job he wants from out of New York City, and he lays all that con. Let me just say this. He knows it's definitely a great advantage because of the travel factor you don't have to travel and number two they are familiar with the Omni and number three they will have a lot of their fans there but number four the biggest asset they have going is their great starting five and the difference will be the big guy again the big guy will be a factor John Sally and I think any time you go to a tournament like this, Bob, and you've got the big guy on your side, you've got a great chance of getting that W. Well, you ticked off four reasons why Georgia Tech will win. Let me give you one reason to make Dale Brown's case. This is a team that has overcome so many things. Tiger Gate, the alleged wiretapping in the AD's office, of course, the chicken pox and the threatened player boycott. So many things have gone down this year for the LSU team. They know what adversity is, and they face it tonight in that second game in Atlanta. Our game right now is at the half. The Reds leading it by... start. The Wolfpack of NC State, they have known what tight squeezes are in this tournament. They had a tight one to start out against Iowa. Then they went, of course, to double overtime against Arkansas Little Rock. So they know exactly what it's like come crunch time in this championship tournament. Iowa State, on the other hand, looked so good on Sunday, Cyclones were not afraid to take it right at Michigan. And they did. So Jim Delvano knows what he's facing. It's going to be tough against Iowa State because they are so quick. And we are concerned about their pressure defense, too, uh, but we've been facing that a lot lately. Well, we watched them a little, a little bit against Michigan, and uh, they're, they're sort of similar to uh, Arkansas Little Rock. Uh, they're, they're a small team, they're scrappy, and they play real hard, and they have good guards. So um, I think we're going to have our work cut out for us again. That game is tomorrow evening. Live, Dick and I will be here at 7.30 Eastern Time from the Midwest at Kemper. Now, the other game on the menu tomorrow evening, the winner of the game will be bringing you takes on the winner of Kansas and Michigan State. Now, there has been so much spoken and written about Scott Skiles. Dick, you and I talked about this on the College Basketball Report beginning of the season when his third arrest occurred back in November, and there is so much written and talked about whether he should be playing, and you've made your feelings known. Well, Bob, I just absolutely feel there's no way he should be in a uniform playing for Michigan State because he really doesn't epitomize what a student-athlete's all about. 
I also feel that he should be given a second chance, and that should have been a medical red shirt for one year and then gain his eligibility. I don't think the people at Michigan State really have done service to college basketball by putting him on a floor. Nobody denies that Scott Skiles is a great talent. As a pure guard, he does it as well as anybody's done it in many, many a year. But he's certainly a poor example for every youngster out there watching. And driving while intoxicated is very serious. If you don't believe it, just ask some mom and dad that maybe lost a loved one because of it. I'm really, I'm, I'm fed up even talking about it anymore. All right, we shouldn't. But uh, tomorrow night, NC State takes on Iowa State. Then, of course, Kansas takes on Michigan State. Our game, 7.30 Eastern Time. We'll have that action. We'll also be getting back to this game in just a moment with Auburn down by nine. Certainly in no other sport does a team and a program reflect the personality of a coach more than in college basketball, Dick. Uh, a coach could just mold the program and the players and select the players, and you need at this point in the season a team and a program with stability, with confidence, and with an ability to overcome adversity. You see it reflected in some of the coaches. First of all, you need talent, Bob. Well, I, yeah. I definitely got to have the talent, number one, because if you don't have too many Bo Derricks, you got too many Phyllis Dillers, you're in trouble. And you better have some Bo Derricks. But I agree with you. I think like Jimmy Valvano, emotionally, he really gets his team primed at tournament time. And every year, it seems at tournament time, they're making that run. Last year, they were eliminated by uh, Lou Karnaseka and St. John's. But then they had the run where they won the national championship. This year, I don't think many people gave them a shot right now. And yet, they have a chance yet to go to the Final Four, even though I think if they get by Iowa State, there's a team lurking out there by the name of Kansas and Larry Brown, who I think is too strong for the Midwest region. There's a team in the East, though, whose coach wears the emotion right here, and no one gave him a snowball's chance in Bristol of being there. I'm talking about Cleveland State. Well, I'll tell you what, Cleveland State has some talent now. All you have to do is switch their jerseys, put them on a school that says, like maybe Georgia or Alabama, and people would give them respect. Mouse McFadden can play, so did Clinton Smith and Clinton Ramsey. Reds are leading it by nine points. Red White will continue with Gary Thompson. This portion of tonight's game is brought to you by UPS. Whether it's for overnight letters or packages, UPS runs the tightest chip in the shipping business. Summit in Houston, Texas. Fred White along with Gary Thompson. Auburn in the first round, defeating Arizona by 10 at 73 to 63, and then shocking some of the nation by taking St. John's out by a whopping 16 points. The Rebels in Nevada, Las Vegas, getting by Northeast Louisiana by 24 in the first round, and moving by Maryland from the ACC, their second victory over the Turks this year, 70-64. Fred Banks back on the floor. Gary, he came out with the leg all wrapped up. His left thigh was really strongly wrapped. He shot a few and had him take it off. They might have had the wrap we couldn't see, or they might have had ice on there wrapped around and they took, took it off, trying to keep any swelling down. Chuck Persons, first shot of the second half, good. He took down his first shot of the first half and then went cold. Now he picks up his 10th point of the ball game. He's 5 for 11 from the floor. Thanks. Had a hot shooting first half for Nevada Las Vegas. He has a dozen points. Well, we've got Auburn now, as we talked about, going man for man defense. And Anthony Jones misses. Gilliam right back up with it. Armand Gilliam has a dozen points. They can't afford to give up that offensive rebound if they want to get back in this game. 36-27, Nevada, Las Vegas. White to Person from the top of the circle. Brilliant. Jeff Person has a dozen. Well, four for ten or not, as he's come out firing here and getting two down. Chuck Person not voted a first-team All-American, said that hurt his feelings, and he has set out in this tournament to show people that he should be a first-team All-American. Well, he had uh, 27 points, 15 rebounds against St. John's, and outplayed uh, Walter Berry. Fred Banks to Gilliam at the top of the circle. Person comes out to cover. Flowers kicks it back out. Banks from long range. Fred Banks continues to shoot well. He has 14 points now, and he is 7 for 10 from the floor, most of them from long range, after being in a shooting slump the first two games in the NCAA tournament. He was 7 for 24 in those two. Banks been a double figure 31 times this year out of the 37 games. Frank Ford misses. The Rebels on the run. Wade almost mishandled it. Now Banks. He's just lighting it up right now. Fred Banks with 16 points. Well, I thought that little bobble right there might have cost him two points because they had the numbers three on two. But uh, when you got a guy shooting like Banks, it doesn't make any difference whether you get a layup or a 15, 18 footer or the way he's shooting. The Rebels up by 11. One of three teams in this tournament that have a chance to break Kentucky's all-time victory total. There's Person. 
You know, and he's calling for the ball in that zone. They come around, I saw him with his hands out asking for it. And they're going to have to start spotting up on him, uh, even from that range, because he can get hot. He's three for three in the second half now, is Chuck Person. And now seven for 13 in the ball game. A double pick that time on the baseline for Jones. Doesn't come off quite tight enough where he can lose his man. Thanks, loops it in and out. Jeff Moore rebounds for Auburn, and here come the Tigers down by nine. Lead pass for Morris is out of bounds. Nevada Las Vegas gets it back. No, Sonny Smith doesn't mind it. I watched him get up over there on the side. There you can see him clapping it, uh, for his team, and he says he wants him to run. We'll throw it away a few times at breaking, but every time we get the basketball, we want to come out running. Sonny Smith, of course, resigned at Auburn last year and changed his mind and stayed in his brought his team back to the NCAA. Anthony Jones from way outside with his 10th point. Boy, does he do a great job of squaring up the basket. He comes off those picks and when he receives the ball, he just steps in and he squared up to the basket. Person took it through the legs and shoots and misses. Rebound, battle. Shot good. That was Frank Ford, the guard going down inside to pick up his seventh point. Well, he likes to get down inside. Uh, Likes to mix it up underneath there. As we said, a good rebounding guard. Uh, four and a half rebounds a game average. Well, Jones put it on the floor and was able to save it. Back outside, the way it comes. Pace picking up a little bit, Gary. They're well, trying to trade baskets now. Well, that's right, and it's uh, man for man the defense. Uh, that'll help pick up the pace for Auburn, maybe get them going. Gerald White to Frank Ford. Shot it too strongly. Oh, what an offensive goal. Morris basket is going to count, and that could be big for Auburn. Morris with a hand on him, able to stick it back. He has eight points. There haven't been many fouls called, but watch the action underneath here. There's been physical activity. Look at him saying, get your hands off of me. <laughs> <laughs> they call him the hammer, and he just hammered Chuck Person. Now, Chris Morris on the line. I think that maybe it's just a tap, not a hammer. What do you think? <laughs> Free throw good. Chris Morris with a three-point play off a strong offensive rebound, and suddenly Auburn within six. And the Tigers fighting back. Mark Wade got it up and then didn't shoot it. Chris Morris kicks it out of bounds. Look at the shooting in the second half. Auburn having first half troubles, but now they're just blistering the nets. Nevada Las Vegas also picking up the pace. Banks getting Banks paid, played the point to run the ball club last year, but now with Wade, Wade has handled the ball most of the time. Banks off the front of the rim. He's missed his last two tries. Anthony Jones tried to save it. Chris Morris has it. Here comes Auburn down by six. Gerald White from the wing. It's a four-point lead in the Battle of Las Vegas. Good little pull-up jumper, and I think this the, the defensive switch going out of the zone to the man-for-man -man has really got Auburn moving, and uh, Jerry Tarkanian's going to get a timeout and stop this run. So the Rebels have called a timeout as Auburn making a move here now, and you can see the jubilation along the Tiger bench. They're on the move here with 15.40 left in this game. It's now Nevada, Las Vegas, 42, Auburn, 38. These regional Kentucky trying to beat Alabama for the fourth time this year. The Wildcats are up 34-30. Second chance points, Nevada, Las Vegas, and Auburn. Auburn with 16, the Rebels with four. The Rebel followers here, those are the Auburn followers, excuse me, the Auburn cheerleaders trying to whip up that small contingent. Sonny Smith talking with Jeff Moore there. They seem to turn things around. You know, in the first half, I made the comment, as you looked at my Jerry concern, Tarkanian. Jerry Tarkanian now, that... The Auburn players didn't seem to be moving, didn't seem to be in sync right there. A little bit lethargic. They tried almost every type of zone with some traps, but this man-for-man -man has really got their adrenaline pumping. Foul on Chuck Person. It'll be his first. The 6 eight senior. Not even close to being in foul trouble now and beginning to find the range. Good look at Chuck Person there. A tremendous talent. He's one of ten finalists for the Nace Smith Trophy of her college player of the year. Johnny Dawkins of Duke was awarded that. Honor. Nevada Las Vegas with the basketball. Their 14 point lead down to four now with 15 20 left in this game. Well, it comes on on this possession on the ball out of bounds, but I'm sure they'll be back man for man. Thanks. Anthony Jones, Nevada Las Vegas. 
Taking their time, and Jones from the deep corner drills it. Anthony Jones has a dozen points. And that's a tough matchup. You got Jones and Banks on the same side. He had to respect Banks so he couldn't cheat and go to the corner, and they couldn't get out quick enough from back inside. Rebels up by six now. Both coaches have their offense in front of them here in the second half. Joe White in front to Frank Ford. Jeff Moore back outside the person, works against Anthony Jones, and he's going to give the ball up. 1-3, one, or 1-1-3 one, one, zone. You'll see him rotate out back inside. Banks going out to get the wing. Jeff Moore in the lane, had it taken away by Anthony Jones with 10 seconds left on the shot clock. And incidentally, the first year they've used the clock in the NCAA tournament play. Jones leads this club in steals, too, so no surprise there that he's got the quick hands. Jones got an air ball in the loose ball battle won by Chris Morris for Auburn. Gerald White with penetration down the lane. The dish to Moore. And the shot good. Jeff Moore has four points, and Gerald White set it up. Well, White's their man. He leads in assists, has a school record 202 coming into this game. Averaging six and a half assists a game this year. Now Wade having fallen. It's on the line. The ball belongs to Auburn. The Tigers down by four with 13.51 to play and really working on it now. Oh, here's moments ago. Gerald White coming in, penetrates, goes up underneath and finds Moore coming in there from the side. He gets control of it, takes it up strong, gets two for the Tigers. Now Auburn a chance to close within two. Mike Jones, the freshman, returns now to the Auburn lineup. And Jeff Moore, the sophomore center, is going to take a seat. Frank Ford playing it inbounds. There's Moore going to the Tiger bench to take a breather here. Frank Ford for Auburn. White. Chuck Person. Gets a double team there. That's in the way both on him. Tough shot. Jones the freshman put it up. And now Person hitting the deck in the lane. The ball is out of bounds and Auburn still has it. Well, Person went to the bucket strongly that time. Watch him go to the basket. And make making a good run here but you've got to have better shots here's person coming in rebound goes up strong can't get it falls through as his momentum took him onto the rim good hustle by person long way to go 13 32 left in this basketball game Auburn's tigers have gotten off the deck after being down by 14 points morris now it's auburn being very patient with it right Ford, white person up at the high post running the ball not much room to get it to him there. They try it. It's slapped out of there. And saved by Gerald White, and he's fouled by Mark Wade. The third foul on Mark Wade. Well, White does a good job here. Gerald White hustling for the loose ball. Comes here, gets his body in front, and then Wade cannot stop his momentum and pushes him, forces him out of bounds. And, of course, college basketball or any basketball, you don't have a force out. You've got to be a foul or a, a travel and they call the foul. He's the first player in the game to come up with three personal fouls. As we mentioned, nobody's in any kind of foul problem so far. From the deep corner, the shot won't fall from person, but saved by Morris. Auburn getting second and third opportunities now, Gary. Well, running Rebels held even there in the first half, 13-13 uh, to 13 on the boards, but they're owning them right now. I think that was a bad shot from Chuck Person. Took a little fade away from about 22 feet out. Well, they made a good run here, and each time down, that's what I think. Jones took up that bad shot there in the lane. They did save possession, but you want to make good shots. Get yourself back in the game. Jones answers with a long-range try. It won't go. Ford battling along the baseline, keeping it alive, and it's out of bounds to offer. Ford behind two Nevada Las Vegas people, able to get a hand on it and cause the deflection in there. Jerry Tarkanian looking on. Looks like a guy who came down on the bus with the rest of the guys from the Moose Lodge, didn't he? <laughs> well, what an outstanding coach he has been in Nevada, Las Vegas. Underrated, and for him to say they don't play defense, but uh, he's pretty cagey. They play some tough defense. And I think they played it probably better defense in the last few years than they did early when they were really running. Gerald White doesn't shoot much, but he throws that one. He has six points in this contest. He's three for three from the floor. He's he's only been, now. He'd only been in double figures one game. That was against LSU. But in the two NCAA games, he was in double figures with 10 and 12. So he's been shooting the well, ball well here lately. Well, out of Las Vegas finding Armand Gilliam down inside as he picks up his 14th. And the Rebels go back up by four with 11.37 left in the game. And the battle is on now here in Houston. Nevada, Las Vegas, the only team in the West still alive. Well, they 
have been dominant in the far west too the last four years they've gone 93 and 8 against other teams in the far west and auburn turns it over ford tried to get the ball to morris down low in the lane and missed him when they come out wing or uh, baseline back to the wing it looks like that bounce pass is there inside that they could attack inside but they seem content to to stay on the perimeter the Battle of Las Vegas has had only one shot down in the paint this half. Auburn has taken it down inside five times, and that's a reversal from the first half, Gary. Well, that, uh, again, it goes back to defense. Uh, they were getting inside on that zone with uh, Gilliam and Flowers down inside. Good double pick. Well, Jones tries in the deep corner and misses. Ford hooks it up to Gerald White. The Tigers on the run. They're three on three. Person. Good job. Chuck Person now with 16 points in the contest and a two-point lead to the Rebels in the Battle Las Vegas. Auburn had trouble in the first half. I only think really got one basket out of transition. They busted open here in the second half, and they've got at least two already. Gilliam and Person wrestling down in the lane. The ball comes to Hudson. Now it's Gilliam. Mike Jones, the freshman, knocked it back out of there, but has called for the personal foul his first. He thought he had a block. Number 13, Mike Jones, that is his first, first 46-44, the Battle of Las Vegas leading here with 10-34 left in the game. And that will put Armin Gilliam on the line. And a 6'9 junior from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania's Bethel High School, a 77% shooter. So Mike Jones there a while ago was uh, voted the all-freshman team and uh, probably the, the best freshman in the SEC conference this year. Gilliam. A wrestler in high school, just in his fifth year of organized basketball, Jerry Tarkanian, the Rebel coach, talking to John Flowers. Flowers really hasn't seen that much action in this game. Looped in and out. Ford clears the rebound. Three-point lead in the Battle of Las Vegas with 10.30 to play. Person to White. On the post to Mike Jones, and the freshman drills it. And then around jumper good. White with just a ball thing back here to the top, to the point. Moved the defensive man out of the middle, and then he went inside. Good play. Great hustle over there by Gerald White. He nearly was underneath the official scorer's table. As he tried to come up with a loose ball, he really went to the deck. His teammates call him Webster. <laughs> you can see why when you look at him. He does look like it. He's really been doing a job here in the second half, Gerald White. And I like to see that off the zones more little ball fakes and influence when you move it and come back uh, ball fake one way and come back against the grain because that uh, zone is always moving and anticipating that pass Auburn shooting 67 percent in the second half after only 44 percent in the first half and most Nevada Las Vegas cooling off to an even 50 percent now Gilliam that's Graham from the corner one ball Eldridge Hudson takes it back up and in. That's a big stick back for Nevada Las Vegas. The fourth point for Hudson is 6 7 junior. Because they got with Auburn Tigers got what they wanted right there when Gary Graham's only a 41% shooter from outside. They get that shot to him all night long. Good kick out. Person, top of the circle, bang. Chuck Person lighting it up in the second half. He has 10 second half points and 18 in the game and a one-point lead in Nevada Las Vegas again. Good job by the freshman Jones that time. Took the pass inside, saw the zone collapsing on him in midair, just kicked it out to Person. Great range by Chuck. Red Banks trying to direct traffic there. Getting Hudson out, comes up over the top. Oh, big block that blocked by Morris. Morris behind the back to White, down the lane. In and out. And look at the battle. Morris picks up the rebound. He's made two big plays for Auburn. In a row. Auburn trying to get the lead here for the first time since the early moments of the game. You know, and I think what you see on that breakaway, I think it was White going down there, but as he went up, he rolls the ball, and that puts spin and rotation on it, hits the rim and spins right out of there. And I can lay it up there without that spin. Jones got an air ball. Sonny Smith thought he was fouled, but he got whacked on the arm. Nevada Las Vegas up by one. Banks with a twisting turnaround jumper can't get it. And a foul is going to go against Mike Jones of Auburn. His second personal foul is over shoving in the lane on a rebound attempt. Jones, a freshman from Phoenix City, Alabama. Third team foul on Auburn in the second half. Nevada Las Vegas has been called for two. It's been a remarkably foul-free contest. And a contest it is now. Time out here with 8.30 left in this ball game. Nevada lost 49, Auburn 48, and we'll be right back.
goes up. Morris comes out of nowhere to block it. Watch him come down. Now he'll give the ball to White behind the back pass. Can't get it back. Watch him now as he gets at the top. Look at him spin that ball off. See the spin on that rim? Just took it right out of the basket. Morris will come back and ended up coming, catching the rebound. Jerry Tarkinian, the Nevada Las Vegas coach looking on. And Kentucky now has opened a five-point lead over Alabama in second half action at the Southeast Regional at the Omni down in Atlanta. Look at the second half shooting here. Hubbard, only 44% on halftime, really shooting it well in the second half. Well, that's exactly the percentage that Auburn shot in the first half. It was around 44%, and the UNLV was lighting it up 59. So shooting makes the difference. And Sonny Smith said yesterday, he said, when we shoot, we look great. He said, sometimes we don't shoot very well. And he said, who the hell looks so good? He also said the only time we're not going to run is when we don't have the ball. <laughs> Auburn is out rebounded to Battle Las Vegas by a half dozen now. You know, 16 turnovers, Auburn. 10 Nevada Las Vegas. Anthony Jones has gone cold from that spot. Now, Frank Ford takes the ball away. They're three on one against Wade. Jarrett shoots and misses. They knock it back up there, and it's Jeff Moore on the third try for Auburn. Terrence Howard couldn't get the shot down, but Moore with the rebound, and Auburn leads for the first time since they were up to the nothing. When they get it off transition again, it wasn't initially there, but caused the mismatch of people, allows them to go on the boards. Auburn doing a great job of getting on the offensive glass. 50-49, War Eagles, and Anthony Jones rearranges the scoreboard with a long bomb near the corner, and he has 14 points. Nevada Las Vegas up by one. And he's been quiet for a while, but he gets a big one there, gets him back to lead. Good pressure by Wade on Terrence Howard. 7-23 left. Now you've got Jerry Tarkanian going man-for-man -man situation. It worked well for Auburn. Let's see what it does for the running Rebels right now. Jeff Person. Terrence Howard did something to Minnie's coach, Sonny Smith, and Happy. He's going to get his inner point guard, Gerald White, back in the game. There's a whistle blowing down in the lane. Play stop. Going to be on Graham, I think, right there. First foul on Gary Graham. Team fouls even at three apiece in the second half. Auburn has shot just five free throws. They're four for five. Nevada Las Vegas has shot only two. They're one for two. And this club, UNLV, has shot like uh, almost close to 700 free throws on the season. They're only one out of two. But you're not going to shoot many free throws when you're out on that perimeter. You get Jones and Banks uh, bombing away from outside. You don't get many fouls unless you're inside or penetrating. There have only been 15 personal fouls called in this game. Six have been whistled against Auburn, nine against Nevada Las Vegas. Now Flowers sits down again for Nevada Las Vegas. He just hasn't seen a lot of action here tonight, and there's going to be a foul in the lane. Armin Gilliam, who just came in the ball game, got in a shoving contest down along the lane, and the foul goes against Auburn. It's going to be on uh, Jeff Moore. I think his first. He was trying to get, couldn't get it in. He tried to force his way out. Tough to lose possession like that. Got the ball inbounds. Got to credit uh, UNLV's defense and their fans back there. Top of your picture, you see them trying to bring the run and Rebels back. Gary Graham out on the wing. Frank Ford defending. Mark Wade. Graham. Anthony Jones. Wade. Graham. Down low. Armin Gilliam. Got the ball and boy. Jeff Moore. Put him on the deck as they come down the lane. Armin Gilliam, who was a high school wrestler, just lost the first foul to Jeff, the first fall, I should say, to Jeff Moore. Boy, things heating up right here. Here comes Moore over. Gilliam pumps him up, gets him down. Then Gilliam tries to grab on to, to keep himself from falling. Here they go. Get inside. Gives the baseline away. Person does. Fakes. Takes it up. And boy, he gets hammered. <laughs> so Moore committed the foul. His second. Armin Gilliam. One for one at the line tonight. Has 15 points. Make it 16. There's Jerry Tarkanian with that towel. Soaks it in water. He has a manager who has <laughs> yeah, designated right. to pull that towel for him. <laughs> Gilliam threads it again. Big guy, good free throw shooter, 76.9% on the year. 52-50, Nevada, Las Vegas in front of Auburn. 6.33 left in the game. Tarkanian, I think, with a good move. Both coaches have made moves. They got him out of where the other team was in good rhythm against the zones. Now they've gone man for man, changed things up. Both teams immediately had trouble adjusting. 
The lob intended for Morris. Eldridge Hudson was there to get a hand on it. And he thought the ball should belong to Nevada Las Vegas. It doesn't. It's Auburn's ball. Well, here's the lob right there. And he's saying he didn't touch it. <laughs> Eldridge Hudson, he says, no way, man. Now Morris is fouled as the ball comes back in the lane. As Mark Wade looks like comes out of there getting a hand in on the big guy. That's the fourth foul on Mark Wade, Gary. So he's the first player in the ball game in foul trouble. Great assist guy for uh, UNLV. He's only 18 assists short of uh, Danny Tarkanian, Jerry Sund uh, of the all-time UNLV record. Well, he has more assists than anybody left in the NCAA tournament right now. He picked up 20 assists in their first two ball games. Red Banks coming back in for Nevada, Las Vegas. And Mark Wade will sit down with those four fouls. Wade has not scored tonight, but he's played a strong four game and sits down with 627 left in the game. Now Chris Morris on the line. Six seven sophomore from Atlanta's Douglas High School. Free throws good. He has 10 points. Right on his average. Very talented player. Then somewhat of an enigma, perhaps, for Auburn. But when he gets it going, he's something. Hits them both. 11 points. Jerry Tarkanian on the rubber bench looking worried. 53 52. Nevada Las Vegas. 6 19 left in the game. Anthony Jones. When Jones sees that ball out, he doesn't miss touching it. Gilliam. Tough shooting luck for Nevada Las Vegas. And the ball is out of bounds to Auburn. And the Rebels having a little tough luck right there as Gilliam's shot rimmed around and fell off. Oh, and Moore, just enough strength that time to keep Banks from getting control of that ball. And then Banks took it out. Gary Graham called for a foul, putting a one-man press on Gerald White. Graham saying, oh, that was incidental. Well, Second foul on Gary Graham, the 6'4 junior Gary from Baltimore. Graham, a good defense, defensive player in there for Mark Wade right now. And you see him going long, grabbing a hold of him, riding him out. Official right there, right on top of the play. Gave him a hand check. Team fouls even at five apiece in the second half. Six minutes left in the game. On a hell ball, it would go to Nevada, Las Vegas. Key player. Look at Graham work on that defense. He is really aggressive. He can cover either a little man outside or he can go with a smaller forward. Jeff Moore loops it in and out, but a foul against the Rebels. We haven't seen Chuck Person for a while. He's on the floor, but they haven't been able to get the ball to him for a while. Well, Auburn's going to be in the one and one here now, the last uh, 551. Eldridge Hudson's third foul. Auburn trying to go in front. In and out. Oh, big rebound. Chris Morris. Shot won't fall. The ball's loose. Jeff Moore left hands it up and gets it. Well, and Auburn gets it. Right. The ball just bouncing around. Not quite UNLV being able to get control of it. And there's a couple breaks there. Where they were able to come off with the, the loose ball. 54-53 Auburn with 529 left in the game. The Tigers down by 14 early. Have battled back to go in front. Graham's shot won't come off. Won't go fall whether it comes off there. And Person grabs the rebound. Auburn ahead with possession of the basketball for the first time in this game. Well, important right here, I think. Just come away, make sure you get a good shot travel. Jeff Moore walks. Auburn turns it over. Sonny Smith calling him over to have a word with him. Yeah, I think what he's saying, hey, I want the ball inside. We've got a man for man. Go down deep. Look for person down inside. Red Banks for Nevada, Las Vegas. The Rebels down by one. Five minutes left in the game. Great hustle that time. And Gerald White. That's the second time he's been under a table in this ball game. He is leading in under the tables in this game. That's two. It must be a baseball player. He's got the good slide. <laughs> Great hustle by Gerald White, but Nevada Las Vegas will still have the ball when we come back here. There's a timeout at the Summit in Houston. Auburn 54, Las Vegas 53 with 4.57 left. But now 54-53, 4.57 left in the game. Second chance points. Auburn with a six-point advantage in that department. It's becoming a popular stat in basketball now. 
the second half shooting. Auburn shooting just 44% in the first half, up to 54% in the second half. UNLV, 59% in the first half, down to 40% in the second. Well, reverting back to the form they had in the first and second round where they only shot 41 and 43%. And Auburn now pulling away. They've out rebounded at 10 here in the second half. And that's what Jerry Tarkanian was worried about, was that rebounding stat. The Rebels of Nevada, Las Vegas. This man-for-man -man defense has shut out Banks. You know, he opened up with two quick baskets here against the zone, but since they went man-for-man, -man, uh, it's been Auburn's game. Anthony Jones got the best Wade. defense in man, Morris, covering on Jones. Wade. Now Banks coming around to pick set by Eldridge. Oh. Hudson knocks it down. Tough shot, but if you can force shots like that, you've got to be satisfied. If they can hit those all night, you just got to say... Uh, well, you got bad luck because those are tough shots. Nevada Las Vegas up by one as Banks came off the Hudson pick to pick up two points. And Fred Banks now with 18 points in this contest. Now it's Auburn trying to regain the lead. Auburn doing a little trapping off that zone. Somebody's got to go to the, meet the pass. Person down in the corner picked it up. Person hasn't had a shot in a while. 4 3 left in the game. 17 seconds on the shot clock. Tarkanian mixing up his defenses. He's the man, man now back to his own. There's Chuck Person from the deep corner, and he now has 20. And there are the Auburn fans on their feet as the Tigers go back up by one. The sixth lead change now. 345 left in the game. Person almost to his average. Average is 21.4 a game. Anthony Jones fakes. Chris Morris comes out and shuts him down. Wade. Now to Eldridge Hudson. Notice. There's Banks off the pick from Hudson again. That time off the heel. And look at Hudson. Back but, to Banks. But you know the key there, the man just released and went to the boards. You're shooting outside. More than likely that rebound is going to come long. Anthony Jones fired one from way outside and got an air ball. Auburn up by one with a basketball. The 313 left in the game. You got to seal that guy, I feel, off the board. Particularly a long shot. It, say that ball is more than likely it's going to come out hot and long. Darrell White, there's the lob. Oh, Chuck Person slams it home, and the Tigers go up by three. 22 points, Auburn's biggest lead. Three points now at 58-55 with 2.56 left in the game. Chuck Person just got his wake-up call. 2.56 left in this game. Auburn leading the battle Las Vegas by three, and we'll be right back. Uh, go to that zone. The Tigers try and counteract it by going over the top. Gerald White to Persons coming in and gets another one of those stuffs off the lob pass. Well, he took it over Eldridge Hudson, who's a very strong player down there for Nevada, Las Vegas, and now with 2.56 left in the game. Auburn has opened their biggest lead of the night at just three points. And the Tiger fans on their feet and roaring here at the summit. Nevada, Las Vegas, at one time leading by 14 in this game. The PCAE, PCAA champions having to come back now themselves. Well, they've got to get back to good shot selection. There they go inside with Jones. They run the pick, come from weak side to strong, and make something happen. Chris Morris commits the foul. His third personal foul. Mentioned Nevada, Las Vegas coming in here 33 and 4. Duke is at 34 and 2, and Kansas at 33 and 3. And all three of those teams have a chance to break Kentucky's all time victory record set in 1948 of 36 wins. Kentucky still alive at 31 and 3, would come up one short of their predecessor's mark. Jones free throw, don't fall. In and out. Costly miss right there in those two. Jones, a 77% shooter. Doesn't get even one of them, and that one may hurt Nevada Las Vegas. 2.35 left in the game. They may look back and want those badly before this night comes to an end. But a steal. Wade missed, and a foul wow. called out on the floor. Gerald White had fouled him before the shot. That is Mark Wade's first shot of the ball game, but it's not going to be a shot. So wave it off. You see the little guy doesn't do much shooting, but he's valuable in other areas. Tries to come from behind, then comes in front, reaches in, gets a deflection. White starts to cut, and Wade, a good job there of just sprinting and beating him to the basket. Wade commits the foul out high. No shots. Well, they got, well, we got one-on-one situation. Mark Wade only didn't take... Only took one shot in a game against Northeast Louisiana and took only five shots in the Rebels' next turn of the game and hasn't taken an official shot here tonight. And again, the free throw misses. 
Nevada Las Vegas missing three straight free throw attempts, still down by three with 219 left in the game. The UNLV as a team just under 70%. Auburn a good free throw shooting team at 75. These close games, NCAA tournament games, usually come down to whether you hit or miss free throws. Auburn touching with a big rebound. Thanks. Short with a try. Frank Ford has the rebound for Auburn. Jammed at the baseline. Hudson has it for Nevada Las Vegas. Beautiful pass. Armand Gilliam. Big basket. 19 points for Armand Gilliam and a one-point lead to Auburn. A minute 49 left in the game. Person in backcourt against Banks. Now to Gerald White. White in open court. The dish is there and the foul called as the bucket won't fall. Boy, White, a great job with penetration that time. He is a good penetrator. Watch him right here. Beats the defense. Low dribble right there. Gets through. Look at the left hand. Passes off. Goes up. Gets hammered on the shot. Doesn't get it down. White came out here disappointed. His teammate couldn't get it down. Look at the little clip. Good job by the lane man right there. Big Jeff Moore coming in. Moore shooting 77% from the lines. We said Auburn a good free throw shooting team. This is where you win or lose them with this charity strike. The foul is on Anthony Jones. Jeff Moore, 77% shooter at the line. It falls. A lot of rim. It's a, look, at, look at the tarp right there. He died with that one. It's Nine points now for Jeff Moore. That one doesn't go. Tip try, no. Person gets it back up. Chris Morris, no. Person got it. First. Oh, the Tigers staying with it. Boy, Person feeling it now. Oh, that turning to his... His fans from Auburn are right back of him there, right in front of him, and urging him on. Well, the War Eagles simply staying with it on the offensive board of open to four-point lead. And they'll be at the free throw line. Well, that's the big difference right here as Moore misses the second free throw, goes up. Morris keeps it aligned. Person in there. Morris again with the shot, doesn't get it. And then Person up off the glass, and he's fouled. Lenny Ward's coming in there, making the call. Shot Person on the free throw line. Three-point play, Chuck Person, he has 25. And it's a five-point lead to Auburn with 134 to play. When the offensive boards have really hurt the running Rebels, particularly in the second half. Good, smart play by Jones. Foul on Chris Morris. That's number four on Morris. Anthony Jones sitting on the floor in the corner. Larry Graham back in the lineup now for Nevada, Las Vegas. You know, what's important about that is you're able to kill the clock as they're down by five, minute 28 to go. Jones, a little spin move there, got him up with a fake and then goes in. Now he gets a chance to get to and deaden the clock at the same time. Anthony Jones had just missed two free throws. A 77% shooter goes back to the line for the Rebels. He has 14 points tonight. He's the PCAA co-player of the year with Utah's Greg Grant and was the tournament. MVP, and boy, he misses again. And the Rebels have missed four straight free throw attempts. 62-57. That wasn't a shooting fight. No, they called it one more. A foul against Gary Graham, his third. And with 1.16 left, Auburn up by five, and the Tigers will go to the free throw line again. Both clubs in the one and one. And on a held ball, the possession would belong to Nevada, Las Vegas. The Tigers of Auburn, strong down the stretch. At once down by 14 in the first half, have battled their way back here. And now, Gerald White steps to the line. A 6-1 junior from Augusta, Georgia. Off the heel of the rim. Person keeps it alive. Back to White in the lane. The left-handed layup won't fall, but he's fouled. Oh, Chuck Person doing it all for Auburn right now. It might seem like a little thing, but he simply kept the ball alive in the lane. Armand Gilliam looking on along with Anthony Jones. Oh, person 6-8 right here. They come, but the ball coming out long, and the guy really had inside position on him. It was just a long rebound, a bad break for UNLV. And then White taking it back up, gets fouled outside. Mark Wade leaves the ball game with his fifth. And Gerald White steps back to the free throw line. He just missed. He has six points. John Flowers, the center back in now. Gerald White has an uncle knows something about pressure. Jim Dent, the golfer. He's had putts that probably looked about like that free throw. <laughs> Same kind of pressure. Seven points now for White. One thirteen left in the game. Auburn up by six. Make it seven. Gerald White got them both. 
And Nevada Las Vegas going to have to get it done in a hurry. Fred Banks is off of the foul. blocking foul. Oh, oh, and Charlie Walker, the official, just hit the deck, but he's okay. His feet slipped out from underneath him. He's all right. Armin Gilliam helping him off the floor. He says, I'm okay. See right here, Banks going inside. White slides in uh, underneath him. Definitely a blocking foul. Official Baca comes in and we're slipped on the moisture there. <laughs> and the, <laughs> the Rebel fans kind of gave him a... <laughs> Maybe a little sarcastic chair because <laughs> they're not happy right now down 64 57. But it isn't the officials, it's a job that the Auburn Tigers have been doing on that offensive glass and missed free throws by UNLV because they've had their chances to claw back in it. They just could not get it down from the charity stripe. Red Banks on the line, first time tonight. He's an 82 percent shooter, the sixth way junior from Las Vegas Valley High School. Still lives at home with his parents. Maybe the best player ever to come out of the state of Nevada. Nevada Las Vegas, the last team in the West still alive in the NCAA tournament. In danger of extinction here. Eldridge Hudson returns the lineup for the Rebels. Jerry Tarkanian getting in a better defensive player as they'll go on the defensive end right now, try and get a turnover. Banks gets them both. He has 20 points. Auburn up by five with a basketball. 111 left in the game. Pressure on. Moore dropped it. Now the center dribbling at open court. Got a wide open. Ford, he's wide open. Good job by Frank Ford. They always say that he comes up with a key, key play in the game, and there is a big one. Auburn by Short. seven. Red Banks misses. Loose ball battle. Out of bounds in Nevada, Las Vegas with 51 seconds left. Well, UNLV has hit a stretch uh, in this game the second half particular shooting as I mentioned earlier they just have not shot well in NCAA tournament play the battle Las Vegas just five for ten at the free throw line and it's really hurt them down the stretch they missed four straight in one stretch here in the second half Try to get some in use some time off dead in the clock Anthony Jones down in the middle to Armin Gilliam turn around Jeffrey yeah, okay. the Rebels having tough luck here yep so sure and the foul goes against Nevada Las Vegas against Gary Graham. That'll be his fourth. 44 seconds left in the game. Auburn up by seven. Again, Graham's fourth foul. Auburn in this half. 78% at the line. Nevada Las Vegas just four for eight. Well, that sums it up right there. Uh, free throw is so important as you go down the stretch. You get to the Sweet 16. These teams are so close that the shooting, free throw shooting, well, that's where it makes the difference. And a Chuck person, an 82% shooter with 25 points in this game, the 6'8 senior. We had a cousin can tell him something about what it feels like to win a championship. Wayne McLean from Villanova. That one doesn't fall in the Battle of Las Vegas. Up in a hurry. Banks lost it. Picked up by Anthony Jones. In and out. Everything's in and out for the running Rebels right now. 36 seconds left in the game. The Rebels simply cannot get a shot to fall down the stretch. Sonny Smith looking on from down in front of the Auburn bench. As Jerry Tarkanian calls a timeout. 36 seconds left in this ball game. Auburn 66, Nevada, Las Vegas 59. We'll be right back. Ford, tournament media coordinator Jay Goldberg. Athletic director Pat Nye of Auburn University, their head basketball coach Sonny Smith and his staff, and sports information director John Lewandowski. And from Nevada, Las Vegas, athletic director Dr. Brad Rothermill, head basketball coach Jerry Tarkanian and his staff, and sports information director Joyce Ashenbrenner. Transportation arrangements made through Fugazi International Travel, the official travel agency for NCAA championships. 36 seconds left in the game. Auburn up by seven. Nevada, Las Vegas with the basketball. Auburn 36 rebounds now to UNLV's 21. They remember they're tied at half. There was those offensive boards and that man-for-man -man defense that I think really turned things around. Brent Banks just drilled his 22nd point in the ball game, and immediately Nevada Las Vegas calling a timeout with 30 seconds left in the game, and now the Rebels back within five. And they're not out of it. Uh, with some timeouts, I don't know officially what they have left, but uh, a lot can happen in 30 seconds. Auburn out rebounding Nevada Las Vegas by a dozen, and those coming in the second half, they were close at halftime. Well, we just gave, I think officially, this is what we were handed on the rebounds, which is a greater difference, 36-21, but there you get the turnovers. 
Auburn with 31 second chance points now. Nevada Las Vegas with 18 in this contest. The Nevada Las Vegas cheerleaders perhaps a little sad as it comes down to the stretch. The Rebels with another splendid season. 33 and 4 right now but in grave danger of being closed out here. There are those second half or second chance points we spoke of. Well they need a break. Uh, they need to catch a foul coming in. You got to hope that Auburn misses. They can come down and convert use a timeout again and uh, use make the best advantage possible out of those 30 seconds. Nevada Las Vegas now out of timeout. Sonny Smith of Auburn has one left. Again, Auburn up by five. 30 seconds left in the game. Auburn with the ball. The arrow belongs to Nevada, Las Vegas. Only John Fred, officially now we got there, as you said, uh, zero timeouts for uh, UNLV. So it's going to be tough right now to come back. If you got some timeouts, you can deaden that clock. But it's they've really got their work cut out. Take a miracle right now if Auburn could just handle the basketball at, at all. Rebels have to force turnovers now. Person trying to get it inbounds. Does to Gerald White, and he's fouled immediately. It's going to be a one and one the foul charge to Fred Banks, his second. That stops the clock with 29 seconds left. Gerald White, who just hit two free throws, a 72% shooter headed for the foul line. And the problem now, down as much as they are, all good free throw shooters in the lineup now for Auburn. Everybody except Morris over 70%. Morris is a 65%er. And you really can't be selected who you foul anyway. When you're down by five, you have to get the first guy you can. That's free throw good. He's at three in a row, and he has nine points in the game now. Well, things are difficult enough for UNLV, but if he nails this one, that puts him on uh, four possessions that they have to get, and I'd say that puts the game away right there. Gerald White hit four straight. Sonny Smith likes it. 29 seconds left. Auburn up by seven over Nevada, Las Vegas. Graham down way out on the wing. Can't get it. Takes it behind his back and loses it. Picked up by Frank Ford. Gerald White deep in the backcourt. Fouled by Armand Gilliam. The first foul on Armand Gilliam. The hammer gave him just a little tap that time. <laughs> 16 seconds left in this ballgame. I know we talked there at halftime uh, about Sonny Smith that he'd have to feel pretty good if he could stay under double figures the way they were shooting because they've been a good shooting ball club. You see the disappointing on the running Rebels as their season is going to come to a close. 33 and 4 going in. A great year. You can see the contrast in the benches. The spare along the Nevada Las Vegas bench, the happiness on the Auburn bench. Gerald White hits his fifth straight free throw, and the Southeast Conference banner continues to fly high. Auburn bench just a little bit more reserved than I thought, but at, at this point, they know that they've got things made. Six straight free throws for Gerald White. Now a nine-point lead for Auburn, the Tigers' biggest lead of the game. They'll get the winner in North Carolina, Louisville. Coming up in the second half of this doubleheader. We're at the summit in Houston, eight seconds left in the game, and Auburn is going to advance to the round of eight. Jump shot good that time by Armand Gilliam. And just let the clock run right here, run it right out as it's on five seconds. It's over. Auburn has advanced, defeating Nevada Las Vegas 70-63. Sonny Smith seeing his plot tonight. Go to 22 and 10 on the year. Jerry Tarkanian, his Rebels closing it out at 33 and 5, and he can manage a smile here. 70-63. Auburn has defeated Nevada Las Vegas. Sonny Smith with hugs all around, and Auburn now is in the round of eight. We'll be back at the Summit in Houston right after you watch this. A performance revolution, an American revolution. So Auburn down in the first half by 14 points, wins it by seven. Back with Dick Vitale, I'm Bob Lee. We continue our live coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship tomorrow evening, 7.30 Eastern time. We've got North Carolina State and Iowa State. You need a dominating gamer of a ball player to win at this time of the year, and certainly Chuck Person is that for Auburn. He showed us that tonight with 25 points and seven rebounds, Dick. Sonny Smith, last year a lot of emotion because he had announced his resignation. There isn't that overlying Cinderella quality this year, but still a lot of feeling for what he's done with this team, which started the season abysmally. Well, it started off with a real blowout right here in Hartford, Connecticut at the Hartford Civic Center when he was blown out by Gail Catlett's Mountaineers of West Virginia. But he's an interesting guy, exciting guy, and an entertaining kind of guy. Loves to strum the guitar, uh -huh. a little bit like Don Williams. Loves to race cars. In fact, he's good buddies at Dale Earnhardt, worked in his pits. This guy is one of the real characters, and he's really one of the funny men, 
But I'll tell you what, he has a great rapport with his players. Right now, down at Auburn, it's party time. Move over, Bo Jackson. Move over, Pat Dye. The new Kings hoop hysteria belongs to the Auburn basketball team. And Auburn is into the round of eight. Now, there's another game ongoing this evening, the first of two at the Omni in Atlanta, with uh, just about a minute to go on this game. Now, Kentucky has a comfortable lead of 65-57. A minute five, we understand now, in that game. It's actually a 10-point Kentucky lead. So now, let's plug in and see where we stand. Auburn the winner over UNLV in our game this evening. Auburn is to the round of eight, and the payday approaches $700,000 per school. And once you get to the round of eight, later tonight, North Carolina and Louisville, winners play in the West at the Summit in Houston. That'll be on Saturday. Now, in the southeast, of course, Kentucky should be winning this game. They have the 10-point lead with about a minute to go. Winner of that game takes on the winner of LSU and Georgia Tech. That game is happening this evening at the Omni in Atlanta. And LSU had caught a lot of flack about the double overtime win over Purdue and the buzzer shot win over Memphis State in Baton Rouge. So now it's a different situation. It's essentially the Georgia Tech home court. Earlier tonight, Alan Massengale talked to Dale Brown about that. They're a great team, and if you play them here, uh, Opelousas, Baton Rouge, Atlanta, or the Moon, they're still a great team. Obviously, there's an advantage playing at home, but we've got to eliminate from our minds, or then it's a, then it's a reason to lose. Now we've got your pregame speech, Coach. <laughs> we want to know. You're going against a team that many say have the best starting five, and you've got John Williams, who has been dominant. What are you saying as you go in? What have you got to do against Georgia Tech? Well, there's several things we must do. We must continually mix up defenses on them. We, we can't overpower them. There's no question about that. They were everybody's preseason, number one. Uh, Price and Sally made everybody's preseason All-American team. Ellen, they got four rookies of the year in a row out of the ACC. But that's a talent, but so is hustle and heart. We've had a lot of that. We've got to match that with our defenses and controlled play. And uh, who knows? Maybe we'll be in the final eight. That guy can look down the barrel of a gun and find something to smile about. You know, Dale, they're... ...at the Meadowlands in the East and Cleveland State and Navy. This is the region with all the storylines developing to Paul with her 12 losses and the Vikings, of course, and David Robinson and Navy. In the Midwest, Kansas has to find a way to stop Scott Skiles in Michigan State. North Carolina State and Iowa State is our game at 7.30 Eastern time tomorrow evening. So our game tomorrow night... Will uh, provide an interesting coaching matchup. Johnny Orr has already proven the point against Michigan. Now he goes against Jim Valvano. Johnny Orr's national championship was beating Michigan. You better believe he was on cloud nine after getting that W because he felt he never was loved at Michigan. He felt never appreciated. He wanted a big contract. They wouldn't give him the big contract. He went to Iowa State and they rolled it out for Johnny Orr. And he's done a fantastic job. Number two team this year in the Big Eight conferences. And they've already knocked off the number one team of the Big Ten. So it's going to get a little testy in the summer on the camps around the uh, Midwest about which league was best. It may have already been proven the Big Eight is. Hey, Bob, uh, Jeff Grayer is an outstanding underrated players from out of Flint, Michigan. We talked about Flint, Michigan, and all the great players that are really coming out of Flint. And Grayer is one of your real surprise players in the nation in terms of recognition. He doesn't get any, and he really deserves it. Again, the final seconds of the Kentucky game, a comfortable lead for the Wildcats, so they'll be moving on to the round of eight. A reminder, tomorrow evening, 7.30 Eastern Time, North Carolina State and Iowa State at 7.30 Eastern Time, and we will be here for our final studio edition of the College Basketball Report next Monday at 7.30 Eastern Time. Then it's on to the Big D, and I'll see you there in the lobby. You'll be doing some lobby. I'll be today, working right? in that lobby. Hey, I'm going to write also down there for the Dallas Times Herald. Big scribe now. You better be good to me. Okay. <laughs> it's on to Dallas Destination. Dallas, we'll see you tomorrow night, 7.30 Eastern Time.